teaser amplification, helping musicians to perform better. Welcome to Fuser Amplification here in California. My name is Eric. Today on the test bench we have a beautiful HH Scott LK150. This is an all electron tube power amplifier designed in the late 1950s and originally came in a kit form. Customer has brought this amplifier in for general service. Let's begin. All right, we're looking at the face of the HH Scott Stereo Master. This is the LK-150 model, and this was manufactured as a kit, as a power amplifier kit. Manufactured between 1961 through 1964. Customer complaint was the sound wasn't to his liking. The bias meter was non-functioning. And after testing all of the tubes, the two output tubes are the 6550 type, and the rectification is a 5AR4 tube type rectification. As you can see that this kit looks like it was modified with yet another kit. The preamp tubes are 7199, but we are using a 6M8 tube and they just did a socket conversion. Also on the back, which I will show later, the input jacks or the gold type. After first startup, I got nothing. Uh, this may be due to two things. One, the fuse was the mini type fuse. I don't know why they used a mini type fuse holder for this particular amplifier. You need something a lot more robust. So there might be an intermittent there. Or it was the diode. There is a German-like diode, which I will show that you've, I've already pointed out in the previous video, but I'll show again. And there may be some intermittents there. It's working fine now, and I was able to rectify those issues. I did my first sound test and I found that the sound isn't exactly to my liking. Now, how do we resolve this? There are two options. One is to change the coupling capacitor to from the phase inverter to the output tube. Uh, we have two choices, which is the Solon type, which I like very, very much. Solon type polypropylene capacitor. Or we can use a paper and oil. Now I can hear the audio file saying, paper and oil, paper and oil, um, which is great. This is what Macintosh used in their amplifiers. I believe they still use them in their amplifiers. I'm not sure. For those who have that knowledge, please leave a comment below. The one thing about the paper and oil capacitor is it does need a break in time. It doesn't take long, but I want to have my customer have an instant gratification hearing something very uh, sparkly in their in his amplifier. Now I can hear the engineer technicians saying change the power supply electrolytic capacitors to a better brand such as the Nishikon Gold type or maybe even the multi-section Mallory's which I like um, we have JJ type electrolytic capacitors installed here and I don't know what brand of electrolytic capacitors that we have here uh, but the engineer technician will tell you you want to use a higher value microfarad and I agree however we don't want to add a lot of cost to this amplifier if it's functioning properly we just want to enhance its sonic characteristic. I do want to make one comment here. I really like this power amplifier. It is one of the best out there. I love the circuit design. Many audiophiles own either this type of power amplifier, those that choose to use a power amplifier and then the separate preamp. They'll choose this one or they'll choose a Macintosh 240. Um, this amp this power amplifier, you don't see too many of these up for sale. 
It's not necessarily because they're rare. It's mostly due to the audio audio file, the serious audio file, will often uh, purchase this type of amplifier and never sell it. It stays in their system. Um, this is usually the one of the pinnacles to their uh, amplifier systems when they're out searching for the ultimate power amplifier. And I agree. I agree. I really like the circuit design, like I said before, and I like the amplifier. So we'll move on and we will show you the functionality of the amplifier in a moment. Uh, let me go ahead and choose what type of coupling capacitor. Again, for those who own this amplifier and you want the ultimate uh, upgrade, let's say, get a high microfarad, good quality electrolytic capacitor, have your technician do that for you. Mallory's great. And of course, Nishikon Golds are also great. So the multi-section capacitors, Mallory and then Nishikon Golds for the um, single electrolytic microfarad gold series, fantastic. You you can't go wrong. Let's move on to the next section. All right, we're looking at the circuit section of the HH Scott LK150. This came in as a kit manufactured from 1961 through 1964. There was no power up originally. Uh, testing the fuse, I removed the fuse and put it back in. That may have fixed the problem. Or it could be this diode. Um, I tested the diode and I got uh, open. Tested it again, kind of wiggled some things around and found that the diode was uh, measuring properly. So I'll go ahead and resolder here and here. Um, looks like somebody burnt the uh, shielding here. But we did deoxid everything as far as switches go. Um, and we also, this was very, very loose. There's a screw. And, here and I'll show you that screw in the top it has a brace that you can push it in and then it'll secure this uh, the connectors are connected with screws here and here so we tighten that up yes and now the bias meter is working previously the owner said that the bias meter was not working so I'm going to go ahead and turn on the amplifier using my Variac and you have this light bulb coming on and that illuminates the, uh, the bias meter. So I just wanted to show you that. You can see here we have these large coupling capacitors here. I think these are fine. I'm going to either... I'm not sure what type of coupling capacitor this is. I don't think it's a paper and oil. It could be. I don't think it's a polypropylene. It's probably a polyester type. I'd like to use a polypropylene and or paper and oil. Uh, this will enhance the sound dramatically. You can see we have uh, some modification as far as uh, capacitors, electrolytic capacitors go. The rich, there are some, there's one what looks like uh, original CAN capacitor. Uh, however, all the other capacitors, the CAN capac capacitors have been replaced by a former technician. You can see this is mounted but with an epoxy and I'll show you the topology as well. There's another um, electrolytic capacitor mounted with epoxy. It's ugly, but that's fine. It, it's This is fine. I, I don't love it, but hey, it's secure. And that's what's important, that it's secure, not bouncing around. We have uh, polyester capacitors here going to the output of the 
um, speaker terminal and I think that's fine I, you can replace that as well I may or may not replace that I, I feel like I'm just gonna leave that at this point we're just cleaning everything up we've got this functioning it was not functioning before and now everything is functioning properly all tubes were tested and they all passed beautifully and again I'll show you the topology uh, uh, in a moment all right, I just wanted to get a shot of the top of the amplifier, just a shot at the top. All right, we're in the throes of changing the coupling capacitors. Looking at the bias pot here, you see lots of rust. You look, looking at the pin sockets, also a lot of oxidation. And this is due to long-term storage. Amplifiers hate long-term storage like most LK 150s that come into my shop they're missing the bottom plate and this exposes the circuit to the elements and this is going to cause a lot of deterioration to the circuit this is very dangerous because you're exposed to high voltages so if you move the amplifier and you reach your fingers reach under and touch anything here you're gonna get a big shock so it's not safe also there's no shielding so you'll get hum as well so I'll have to remedy it we will have to remedy this somehow I'm not exactly sure how we're going to do this because this is a modification um, that can be expensive we're talking hours here so I'll discuss that with the customer in the future I'm going to clean this rust off uh, and you'll you'll see the results of that in, in a moment. I'm going to change this wire here. Uh, it's going to stay the same location but uh, this looks weird. I just want to clean this up a little bit. This is just for my own preference. A lot of oxidation here rust as well again this is because there is no bottom plate and we see a lot of exposure to the elements all right we have replaced the coupling capacitors and i chose the paper and oil 0.22 nanofarad coupling capacitors paper and oil so all of you audiophiles out there should be pretty happy about that choice I replaced this wire. I cleaned up all of the connection points. They were caked with um, flux. Uh, the person who put this together was uh, not a technician. Uh, a lot of cold soldering joints. I tried to fix those up. It's just somewhat of a clumpy mess, but it's functioning. It's, it's going to be fine. I'm looking at these capacitors here and I may replace those these are 0.1 microfarad and I may replace those with the polypropylene let me go ahead first and do a sound test and I'll come back and let you know what what I found all right so I did run a sound test with the paper and oil capacitors and oh my god amazing it's just incredible what a simple change can do as far as the coupling capacitors go now the polypropylene by Solon or a polypropylene well frankly I really like the Solons there are other polypropylene capacitors but those are my favorite um, but my most favorite are the paper and oil these are military type uh, from Russia and the sound is spectacular it has this really rich harmonic swirl to it and that was pretty much right away as the, the minutes went went by it just got richer and more harmonic um, characteristic that is um, known for these tube amps very three-dimensional sound it was just amazing uh, one thing I wanted to point out was I did retap these holes here and placed new feet these are brand new feet um, so that will lift 
the amplifier off the surface of whatever it's going to be placed on and allow some air to circulate under the chassis. Again, I do want to mention, not really safe to not have a bottom plate, but I don't have a solution for this particular client. Um, I'll let him know that it's dangerous. Uh, he doesn't want to pick this up. I do have a resistor that will drain the voltage once it's turned off, but it's still really no excuse to have um, no bottom plate for safety. Uh, issues, but we'll we'll talk about that um, later. Also, I did take apart the bias indicator, uh, polished everything up so it looks really nice. I'll give a front shot in a moment. Okay, so I have polished the glass enclosure, polished the dial, took everything apart, then reassembled it. I just wanted to show uh, the bias, so pressing on one channel, and you want the bias to line up on this red here, right where it says red. And we'll do the other channel, and boom, perfect. Really nice, really nice. And it had it's illuminated, so let me show you the illumination. Let me see if we can make that happen. But let me see if I should take that light out. You can see some illumination. How about both lights? So there's the illumination there. It's one light bulb. And uh, this is something I think looks really nice at night. Let me get a, another shot of that right now. Please hold. And here's what it looks like with the lights down and everything illuminated. Really, really cool. I mentioned that the preamp tube was a 6M8. Uh, I'm incorrect. I meant to say that the preamp tube or the phase inverter tube is a 6H8. A 6H8. Originally came with the 7199 and it has the uh, kit to use the 6H8 tube. Alright, this is the HH Scott LK150. Looking at one of the channels. And we have a very nice sine wave here. Okay, again, we're looking at the HH Scott LK150, looking at the other channel, and very balanced. Look at that. Isn't that something? We have a very even sine wave. Very even sine wave. Very nice. Phaser Amplification, helping musicians to perform better.